what is everyone and welcome back to another video in this video i want to go over how to create these really cool blend edits now i'm not sure how long this trend has been around or you know just in general how long this has been around but i've seen this really popular on um, instagram you know fan pages and i want to go ahead and kind of give my go at it can i just try these blend edits and see if you can actually do it um in final cut um pro 10 and basically it's just blending a whole bunch of different images together primarily from like movies um and tv shows now in case you're wondering you know what tv show am i using uh, you know for the example um this is the uh well this is star wars in general but the two shows that i'm primarily focusing on are the clone wars and the bad batch so i'm going to focus on this video just primarily on star wars because if you didn't know star wars is hands down um, my favorite franchise and all my favorite movies and TV shows um, are Star Wars. So you can go ahead and you know, leave it down in the comments down below. We have a, a conversation about Star Wars. I'd love to see if anybody else who's following me is also a big fan of Star Wars. And when I say I'm a big fan of Star Wars, I'm a huge fan of Star Wars. And I want to kind of finally implement it, you know, implement my, you know, show my love for it in one of my videos. And I finally got a really cool idea. So yeah, if you're, you're um, a really big Star Wars nerd, let's go ahead and have a conversation down um, in the comments below. So what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to go ahead and open up the example right here and just basically give you a breakdown of how to create a blend edit right here. So you can see right here, here is the final edit. I'm going to go ahead and do my best to kind of, you know, um, recreate um, the edit. Obviously, you know, the mask and everything like that um, probably, you know, won't be, uh, you know, entirely perfect. But I'll do my best to kind of, you know, recreate um, the edit. So what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to go to the uh, first one right here. So I'm going to go ahead and just go ahead and just disable the clips right here. So let's just disable the disable the clips right here. And all we have left is a photo of Wrecker. Now probably this entire video I'm going to be very like nerdy about Star Wars. So you know, if you're not a huge Star Wars fan, I apologize for that. But if you're a huge Star Wars fan, then you'll probably, you know, respect that. So yeah, I'll probably get kind of nerd out. Um, in this video. So as you can see right here, we have a photo of Wrecker right here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take the scale right here, increase the scale, take the position, and then I'm just going to move the position of Wrecker right here. So this is kind of like the um, top photo right here, and this is pretty much where I want Wrecker to be. Now what I'm just going to go ahead and now enable the photo of Hunter right here. Um, so you have Hunter right here. I'm going to go ahead and just increase the scale to like a, a increase the scale by um 15 percent right there so you can see right here now i'm just going to go ahead and, and cut off the top section of his head right here so basically this part of his head well i guess i'll, I'll just show you an example so go to mask right here take a draw mask right here and just apply a draw mask now a disclaimer i'll probably you know keep saying it these masks and everything that aren't going to be perfect but the the objective of the video is to just give you an overarching idea of how to create um the blend edit because blend edits are definitely pretty fresh uh uh, difficult and they can definitely take a while but once you get the hang of it it's pretty easy so what i just did was i just went ahead and disabled the two windows right here went up to actually i'll go to like um 600 percent um right here and what we'll do is go ahead and just kind of find a place where i want to start to cut them out so let's just start you know right here and you want to make these aligned you know as straight as possible right here and if you're wondering well, how in the world are you getting those lines so straight um, I'm just holding down shift right here uh, you want to anytime you're doing a mask you, and you want a uh, straight line hold down shift so what I'm gonna do right here is I'm gonna go ahead and cut out um hunter right here again this would be a rough mask I won't you know I won't you know just completely goof off on it. now the crosshair mask i'll probably just completely goof off on that one but this one i want to get a pretty good idea of it right here the reason i chose this photo as an example is it has like three or four different you know effects in it that i want to go over so as you can see right here here's hunter now i'm going to go to 50 percent you realize wait a minute, you didn't cut out the entire image of hunter well you'll see what happens um in a second right here and again you know the mask isn't going to be you know entirely um perfect so you know just you know be aware of that just kind of a disclaimer so as you can see right there there we go now we fit to screen right here and then there you go as you can see just the top part um of his head is cut out um right there so you know just simple as that um right here you want to obviously make sure the mask is straight again it might not be you know a perfect example so i'm going to go over to the mask right here and just for example you want to go ahead and just feather the mask um just a little bit just to make you know the edges um a little bit smoother um, right there. And I'm going to take the clip right here, take the clip of Hunter, hold down option, and I'm going to create a copy. What this copy is going to do is it's going to make this line not so um, harsh. So I'm going to go ahead and head over here, mask, delete the mask, 
um, right here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and go to the mask right here, add another draw mask um, right here, go up to 50% right here, and basically just cut out the image um, right here, and you'll see why in a second. Basically what I'm doing is I'm just trying to fade the clip right here. So let's go to like 200, actually I'll go back to fit right here. What you want to do is now on the copy clip add a graduated mask right here. That is how you get the uh, fade. I think in Photoshop it has like the feather effect. Uh, in Final Cut it's called the graduated mask. So I'm going to line it up right here. Take the graduated mask right here and then as you can see there we go that looks pretty good right there. Now you can see the edges of Hunter. Um, are faded um, are, are uh, faded right there and as you can see right there there you go now the edges are faded now we're going to go to the bottom clip right here I'll go over this you know in more detail I'm going to go ahead and change the mask uh, shape type to B spline what that just does is it just helps smooth up the edges and I'll go over that you know in more detail but it's basically like out of the best um, shape types um, uh, B spline is the best one it creates the smoothest edges now what I'm going to do is going to go ahead and select it right here uh, so what I'm going to do right here is I'm just going to move Hunter right here. So I'm going to select on the two clips right here, uh, which is right here. So I'm going to go select and then just move Hunter right here. You want to make sure you move both of them. You want to make sure you move the copy with the graduated mask and you want to move Hunter or else uh, it's going to look um, completely um, off right there. So as you can see, there we go. Simple as that. Next one right here is I'm just going to add a photo of tech right here. So you, uh, this is, I, I can't remember if I mentioned this in the beginning, but these are all members of the Star Wars show, um, the Bad Batch, the main characters, what the show is all about. So I'm going to go and take right here. I'll move tech over here, the Y axis right here. Now the important thing is you wanna make sure that the top photo is overlapping on the bottom photo or else the graduated mask um, won't work. So I'll go ahead and go over here, add a graduated mask. And what I always like to do is I wanna to go to the, the center right here, center it up. And then you can, you can see right here, I can just move um, the top right here. So let's move it over here and then We'll just fade the edges um, as much as we want, and there we go. Now the edges are uh, faded um, right there. It's kind of as simple as that. Next, I'm going to uh, enable the photo of Echo right here. Uh, again, yes, I'm going to be nerding out in this episode. Uh, so as you can see right there, we just cut out the image um, right here. I'm actually going to increase the scale. I can't remember what I did, like 140 or 60. I can change it later. So you can see, there we go. If you can increase the scale just a little bit. I would have liked to have the photo of a little more wider shot of Echo, but it is what it is. So we'll go ahead over here, add a graduated mask, and then voila. As you can see, just as simple as that. Now again, one thing that I found by doing this for the first time is you want to find a photo where it's not, you know, the part on top of his head is cut off, or else you have this kind of you know, cut off fade effect, which is okay, but it's you know it's a, a kind of like a sacrifice you're gonna to have to make if you don't have a good photo. But let's go to the left right here, crop, and we're gonna crop it right here. As you can see, voila, we're finished. Not yet. If you realize that looks ugly, that looks ugly, that looks ugly, ugly. This whole this whole section um, right here looks um, absolutely ugly. So how do we fix that? Simply, we take a cutout and place it on top to cover up those harsh um, edges. And this is personally one of my personal, you know, favorite methods to do is to basically just use have a cutout. So let's just increase crosshair scale right here. Again, like anything, you can you know anything is edible. You can you know fix stuff. Um, we can increase crosshair a little bit right here. This is just, you know, one, you know, primary, uh, just kind of like a preliminary or basic example right here. You can go ahead, you know, and find much better photos. But as you can see, we'll go to the draw mask um, right here. We'll wait for um, it to render right here. And then what I'm going to do right here is I'm just going to make a really, really horrible, horrible um, selection of crosshair right here just because I want to get the point across and I'll give a much more uh, detailed explanation of masking and some tricks that I've learned I've been doing this for years and I just found a new trick for masking uh, that quite frankly I've never seen anybody talk about before and it's a technique that people should be talking about because I like it a lot so we're gonna go right here obviously you know if you to a mask like this in a real edit or you know the client edit or something I don't know if you'll be able to keep your job if you do a mask this bad but for the sake of the tutorial like I always do I just want to get um, the basic idea of how to create it right there and voila there you go
So you can see right here, now there's a couple little problems right here. You can still see the edges, so we'll move crosshair over here, and then there it goes. You can see right here, his character covers up um, the edges right here. We can also go to tech right here, and then move tech over here. And wow, that looks pretty good right there. Now, a couple other tips and tricks I'm going to go over um, regarding the mask. Now, again, this is, you know, a really, really harsh um, example um, right here. But I want to go over a couple little tips. So first thing you want to do is once you have the draw mask, then you want to go to the feathering right here. The feathering just helps fade and just smooth edges so you don't have, you know, any, any of this, you know, outline right here. So always, you want know, to try to unfeather it right here. So, you know, obviously this is a you know, very, very rough um, example. But there you go, negative 17. They just look, you know, a little bit um, smoother you can also go to the mass points right here so I can go to a mass point right here I can right click on it I can change it to linear I can change it to smooth I can delete the point disable lock the point I can also go right here and add a point um, if I want to right here now another thing you want to go over is the B spline tool now again I will give you a much better example but look at the edges right here they're incredibly sharp if I go over here and change it to B spline right here watch the edges Voila, the edges completely smooth out. It's a really cool technique and no one's ever really talked about the B-spline tool. Uh, it's a really cool um, uh, feature of the mask that I did not even know um, existed. Now I want to go over a couple um, different tips and tricks, uh, you just things that I've learned uh, by doing it for the first time. I've never uh, ever you know, experimented with blend editing, um, so yeah, this is the completely first time I've ever tried blend editing. So the first thing I want to go over is the flip effect right here. So as you can see right here, we're going to go ahead and just disable the draw mask right here, and here's the original, oh, the flip photo. Here is the original photo, and I added a flipped effect right there. Basically what the flipped effect does is it just flips the image. So it goes the opposite direction. So Omega is just constantly staring this direction. I think I have another example right here. So if I go over here to flipped right here, as you can see, Omega is looking this direction right here. Omega is looking you know, this direction right here. If I go to flipped right here, now she's looking the other direction. So it's a really cool you know technique to use uh, when the subject you know isn't looking in the correct, you know, isn't looking you know, in the correct uh, like way or the correct position. It's a really cool way to kind of flip effect just in case the character isn't facing the way that you want in your edit you can use the flip effect now i'm not saying you always want to use it because it might not be 100 percent accurate or look you know look really good but it's a really cool technique definitely try it out just go ahead and go to the effects panel flipped there we go there's the effect right there it's a really cool way of flipping photos uh, i kind of didn't really like it at first i thought it looked kind of looked a little bit weird and now to be honest i actually can't tell which one if, if you just show me this i actually i don't think i'd be able to tell which one is flipped or not um, so it's a really nice um, feature right there. Next one I'll go over is again give you a much better example of the B spline tool right here. So as you go right here, let's zoom up to 200 percent. Actually, I'll go. To, I'll give an extreme example. Let's go to 400 percent. So if you look at, uh, I can't remember. This is like tr I think Trace or Rafa. I can't remember which one, which Martis, Mar Martis sister. I can't remember the name correctly. Um, the Tracer Rafa. So as you can see right here, I think this is Rafa. So anyways, here, here's your hair right here. I you I could do a much better job or much more serious job of masking. As you can see, that looks perfect. That looks pretty good. Obviously, you know, I could put a little more time, but overall, I think it looks pretty good. Let's let's just do a couple small little adjustments. Let's change the shape type to linear. So watch the hair. As you can see right here, there are a couple, like right here, right here, there are a couple little harsh cuts. Now again, it's not going to be like the mind-blowing difference because every photo is different. But by changing it to B-spine right here, as you, as you watch the hair, it just, boom, it just smooths out the hair and looks incredibly nice. So the B-spine tool, basically simply take, uh, take your photo, cut it out, feather it, and change it to B-spline, it's going to look um, amazing. Obviously, you, know, you can do a couple little um, adjustments uh, here and there. Now I also want to go over a couple other tips and tricks when it comes to blend editing and just some things um, that I've learned again doing it for the first time and here's some of my little pieces of advice. Basically you want the images to look similar. You want the colors to be the same, the lighting to be the same, the backgrounds to be the same, the characters to be the same right here. This is a prime example right here. This is just all shots of Anakin. Now not only is it all shots of Anakin Skywalker, it's all from the same scene with the same colors, the same lighting. You want a, a sense of consistency and that's really important. The images need to look, need to blend really well together. For example, if this is like Ahsoka, Obi-Wan, Anakin, Rex, 
Rex, Obi Wan was on, on Mustafar, Rex was on you know Mandalore. It's just a whole bunch. Like all the characters are different, the lighting's different, the scenes are different. It's not gonna match well. So you want to make sure you kind of you know, like take a scene and then you try to blend it together. You want things to look similar. And to be honest, it's kind of like an instinct thing. You'll immediately know if something like you have an idea, and you'll immediately know um, if something is off. Another thing I want to go over is color grading or adding LUTs. Now I chose not to add color grading, just you know for this just to, uh, this particular example. But what you can do right here is just add an adjustment layer on right here and just wait for the um, adjustment layer to render. Now I'm going to head over here to the effects panel right here, um, exit right here. Let's go to color right here. Let's scroll down until I find custom LUT, uh, and we'll just basically just let apply. Um, the custom LUT onto the adjustment layer right here, and this is basically just how you add a LUT or color grade in Final Cut. I obviously don't have much better, you know, examples. A much your know, videos do much more you know, in depth, but I just want to just give you the simple overview. So custom LUT right here, and then we want to use Poly Record or I want to use um, Chrome right here. So you can just add a whole bunch of different LUTs. It's completely up to you. The objective of what I was trying to do is just basically just show you the like, how to add LUTs. Um, right there's an adjustment layer, add a LUT, add a color. Again, that's just you know, a, a um, very basic and brief example, but that's basically you know how you do it. Just in case you know you don't know how to add um, color grading, or you don't know how you know add LUTs um, in Final Cut Pro 10. Simple as that. Adjustment layer, and then just add um, a custom LUT um, right there. The thing I want to go over is basically how to make your timeline smaller so you can see right here this is really painful to have all these images you know it's hard to see which images you know are which when you especially if you have like 15 images stacked just go ahead head over to the timeline right here scroll all the way down right here go to this icon over here this slider right here and voila there you go as you can see now your timeline's a lot smaller now you can see all the photos just in one look and it's you know really really um nice to do that now, if you're wondering, you know, where in the world did I get all of these um, images from? They're called screen caps. So go ahead and look up Star Wars screen caps or, you know, Marvel screen caps. So it's basically, you know, put the name of the movie or the character um, with screen caps, um, you know, in the actual title. And I'll make sure to put a link in the description below to the website where I downloaded um, all of these screen caps. So if you want to you know, practice some blend edits, I'll make sure to put the link down um, in the description below. And that's pretty much it. I just want to give you the basic overview of the blends. Hopefully you enjoyed um, the intro. I decided, you know, again, not to add a color grid just because I want to kind of show kind of the raw images. And you know, that's pretty much it. Anyways, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you found it helpful and informative. If you're new to this channel, I upload Final Cut Pro 10 tutorials every day at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you enjoy these types of videos, definitely consider hitting that subscribe button. Also, Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial playlist with over 260 Final Cut Pro 10 tutorials. Anyways, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.